Hi everybody, this is Maureen Wong for YourNextStamp.com. Today we're going to be making this fun spinner card and when your recipient opens it up, it spins. And it's actually really easy, so let's get started. Okay, today I'm using Hot Cocoa Phoebe and she is not meant to be a spinner card, but I will make her work because she is close enough. She's not exactly symmetrical, but it's so close that I thought it would work anyway, and it does. So I've cut the die cut out two times, once from white and once from pink, and I put them back to back. And you can see that because she's not exactly symmetrical, there are bits of the white die cut peeking through um, around the pink layer, and that's because it doesn't line up exactly perfectly. If you want it to line up exactly perfectly, what you're going to do is stamp on the back of your die cut and then it's going to be, um, the die cuts are going to line up exactly, but the thing is, is that the stamp image is not going to line up exactly with the die cut. So it's up to you which way you want to do it. Here I'm showing you that I've turned over the die cut to the back and I'm inking up the Phoebe and using my small footed Martha Stewart stamp press to stamp her down and you can see when I hold her up that it doesn't exactly match the die cut but it's so close I don't think it matters but it's up to you which way you want to do this. Now I'm going to show you the coloring for one of the Phoebe's sped up and I'm going to do two of them exactly the same way. I'm starting with E000 and then I came in with R20 for her cheeks and then E00 to blend out those cheeks and give her a little bit of shadow and for a darker shadow I'm coming in with E11. Then I'm going to blend that out with the E00 and come back in finally with the E000. Now for her hair, I'm using E29 as my darkest brown and I'm going to flick in some hair for her with that darkest brown. And then I'm going to come in on the top with the same flicking motion. And I'm sorry, my method of coloring kind of hides the point of the pen a little bit. This is the next darkest color, E27. It's my mid-tone, and again, I'm coloring with uh, little flicking marks. And then finally, the E25 is my lightest color. Okay, and now for her coat, or actually, no, I'm going to her boots now. I'm making her some black boots. I'm coming in with C9. C7 and C5, which is my favorite color combo for black. And now moving on to the coat, I've gotten out R89 as my darkest pink. Then I'm coming in with R85 and R83 as my light tone. and I'm going to use those same colors on her sleeves and then on her hair bands. And this is uh, one of my favorite pink color combos. Um, sometimes if I use a really light color I'll go in with the R81. And I'm using my C3 just to put a little bit of shadowing on those white areas of her collar, her gloves, and her coat and socks. And I used E23 for the cocoa. And this is BG07 for the cup. And I made a mistake when I grabbed my next color instead of a BG05. I grabbed B05. So I just grabbed the B02 as my lightest tone. I came in with a Sharpie paint pen to do the little marshmallows in her cocoa and I didn't show that. And here you can see I'm cutting her out with the matching die and you're gonna do that two times coloring and cutting so you get two of the identical Phoebe's for your spinner card. Now I've gone ahead and used the largest die in the stitch rectangle die set to cut a piece of pattern paper for the front of my spinner card. I'm just going to put adhesive in the center of that piece because I don't want it stuck down permanently yet. I'm going to take a die, 
from that same rectangle set that fits Phoebe in it and actually the smaller one fits her a little bit better and so I'm going to center that as well as I can and tape it down and run that through my die cut machine and it's going to take a bunch of passes I'm using a heavyweight white cardstock for my base so that die has to cut through the pattern paper and the heavyweight white cardstock. So you can see here it's a little stuck in, but if I just fiddle with it a little bit, it pops right out. And then you can see that my pattern paper layer has come off because it was only stuck down in the center portion which I cut out. Now I'm using a piece of beading thread for my spinner mechanism. You can use sewing thread, uh, uh, one strand of embroidery floss, fishing line, anything you want really. I just like the beading thread. It's nice and lightweight but it's really strong and so I just tape that to the front of that window area and now I'm gonna put a lot of ATG adhesive on that pattern paper frame to make sure that it sticks down well to my card base and also that it holds that tape and beading thread in. I'm going to line that up and stick it down and then um, I have this piece of green pattern paper that I'm going to put on the inside. I'm just checking to make sure that that looks nice with the Phoebe in front of it and it does so I'm gonna go ahead and stick that in that was also cut with the largest die of the stitch rectangle die set and now for the spinner portion what I'm gonna do is open up my card and I'm gonna put one of those Phoebe's wrong side up and get a little bit of tape and tape her to the beading thread centering it as well as I can and then I'm gonna take some multi-medium mat in my little squeeze bottle to stick down the other Phoebe and this is a really good strong adhesive it goes because I have that needle tip it goes into small areas really well and I know it's gonna hold my Phoebe together really nicely uh, even through the spinning so I'm gonna stick her together and line it up as best I can so there's the least bit of um, non-overlap I guess you can call it and so you can't really write a message in there so what I'm gonna do is make a panel for the back side of my card for you to write on and you can just write on the back of the card because it's a heavyweight white card stock whatever pen you're using probably won't bleed through but I just cut an extra piece of white cardstock and I put two strips of pattern paper on there and cut it with the largest stitch rectangle die and I'm going to attach it to that back. And I forgot to stamp my sentiment on before I started or before I finished the card so I'm going to put it on now using my small Martha Stewart footed stamp press and I'm using You Warm My Heart with all the hearts underneath it and there is my finished card. And so in case you're not familiar with spinner cards, what you do is you just turn, 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 turn her as many times as you want. And some people only do a few turns, but I like mine to really, really spin. So I'm going to turn it a bunch of times. And then you're just going to close up your card to hold her in place. Stick it in the envelope and send it off to your recipient. And then when they get it, they open it up and open the card and it spins just like that. So thank you very much for watching. We hope to see you over at yournextstamp.com for these and many other fun products.